Let's move on now to inflammation. Epididymal orchitis is usually a clinical di diagnosis and is usually easily confirmed on collodoplar ultrasound. The addition of contrast-enhanced ultrasound will allow you to determine whether or not an abscess is appearing. This is a non-vascularized area and will not enhance. If you can detect an abscess at an early stage or delineate the extent of the large abscess, this will allow prompt treatment. If an abscess is developing, oral antibiotics need to be changed to intravenous antibiotics and surgical management with drainage may be required. The addition of contrast-enhanced ultrasound may also show you whether or not there's thrombosis in the spermatic cord vessels, especially in very severe inflammation. These are two patients with entirely different abnormalities in the testes as a result of very severe inflammatory change. In the first patient, there is thrombosis in the vein in the spermatic cord and there is venous infarction in the testes. Contrast-enhanced ultrasound shows that the border is well delineated, there is peripheral enhancement and no internal vascularization. This is a venous infarction. The second patient has very severe epididymitis, but he has also developed an abscess within the testes. The abscess is very different from the venous infarction. The walls of the abscess are irregular and septations are forming across the abscess. This is again very clearly demonstrated with contrast-enhanced ultrasound. The management of these two patients may be identical. This patient may require an orchidectomy, but the etiology is clearly demonstrated. Conservative management may be undertaken in the case of the venous infarction, with time allowing the regression of the area of infarction and the extent of viable tissue becoming obvious. The abscess, however, is unlikely to rapidly resolve. Patient's symptoms will remain, and orchidectomy is almost invariably required. Tumors and complex cysts, again, the guidelines have a section which looks at tumors and complex cysts. We've seen, seen earlier that color Doppler ultrasound is thought not to be sensitive when the tumor is less than 1.5 centimeters. This, however, with the advent of the very high technical components of new machines, this may no longer be true. However, the differentiation of tumors from simple cysts with the addition of contrast-enhanced ultrasound and demonstrating echogenic debris without vascularization is a straightforward examination with contrast-enhanced ultrasound. Nearly all testicular tumors will demonstrate vasculari vascularization on contrast-enhanced ultrasound. Therefore, contrast-enhanced ultrasound is useful to confirm the presence or absence of vascularity. There is, however, very little evidence in the literature with regards to these findings, and a lot of this is based on personal experience. This is a large seminoma in the testes measuring over 1.5 centimeters. There is clear demonstration of vascularity in the 1.5 centimeter tumor following the administration of contrast. The parenchyma is less enhanced. Experience shows that this vascularity is very transient, lasting anything between 20 and 30 seconds before that tumor washes out. This is an example of a lymphoma. This tumor behaves very differently with the addition of contrast. Lymphoma tends to grow along the lines of the anatomical structures without distorting vessels. And vessels can be seen very clearly through the tumor in contrast to that of a primary germ cell tumor where there is disorder of the vessels. It is, however, important to note that contrast-enhanced ultrasound at the moment cannot tell the difference between the different histological types. For example, this is a Leydig cell tumor. Leydig cell tumors tend to be much more vascular than primary germ cell tumors, and the vascularity tends to last longer. However, 
This should not be used to differentiate this tumour from a primary germ cell tumour. In this case, it's important to ascertain that this incidentally discovered low reflective abnormality in the testes is vascularized. This will allow the appropriate management either to watch and see what happens to this lesion over a period of several months or to allow surgical resection under ultrasound guidance. Here is another not very common intratesticular lesion, but importantly benign. This is an epidermoid cyst. Only 1-2% to of testicular tumours are epidermoid cysts. There are characteristic features on the B-mode ultrasound examination. The classical onion ring appearance, as demonstrated in this example, allows the confident diagnosis of the benign epidermoid cyst. However, there are other types. Densely calcified, calcified cysts, or just a mixed heterogeneous polydefined abnormality. The key to the diagnosis is the complete absence of vascularity. An epidermoid cyst is a true cyst containing caseating material. The color Doppler ultrasound is usually very good at showing that there is no vascularity, but the addition of contrast to the examination allows greater confidence in interpretation. In this case, there is increased enhancement around the periphery of the lesion, not because of inflammatory change, but of compression of the surrounding testicular parenchyma. Compare the example I've just shown you to the example of an atypical um, epidermoid cyst where there is calcification of the rim and no vascularity within the central aspect. This too is an epidermoid cyst. The complete absence of vascularity within this lesion allowed for a targeted excision biopsy of the lesion rather than subjecting the patient to a total orchidectomy. So in summary, in the group of patients with an incidental lesion discovered in the testes, with no clear demonstration of what this abnormality is on the baseline examinations, contrast can add to your diagnosis. In the first patient with increased vascularity, this is likely to be a tumor. In the second pa patient with no increase in vascularity, this is likely to be a benign abnormality, which in this case was a focal area of scarring following a testicular biopsy. Let me illustrate this with a, a single case. This is a young man who presented with acute scrotal pain. There were three lesions seen in the testes. One was an area of mixed reflectivity, larger than the other two, with no color Doppler flow. The other two lesions were of lower uniform reflectivity with some color Doppler flow. The addition of contrast at this stage demonstrated increased vascularity in the two lesions which showed some increased color Doppler flow, but the larger lesion was completely avascular. On histology, two seminomas were demonstrated corresponding to the vascularized lesion, and the larger mixed reflective avascular lesion was in fact a testicular infarction. But this diagnosis was confidently made prior to the operation. Let me summarize the, the recommendations for the use of contrast-enhanced ultrasound in the testes. This can be used to discriminate focal testicular lesions into those that are vascular and those that show no enhancement, potentially identifying lesions without malignant potential. Secondly, it can discriminate areas of non-viable tissue and testicular trauma. Contrast can detect and characterize areas of segmental infarction. And finally, it can discriminate areas of abscess formation in severe epididymal chitis. It is important to know and to realize that these are findings based on very little literature at present. This will change in the future, but the main use of contrast-enhanced ultrasound is to demonstrate those areas of vascularized tissue from non-vascularized tissue. 
This in the future will be the most important use of contrast enhanced ultrasound in the testes. Finally, there are publications out there combining the use of contrast enhanced ultrasound with B mode and color Doppler ultrasound and also adding tissue elastography to aid in the diagnosis. This again may become more important in the future.